hello everyone. I am super excited that you are here. I am Janai Thornton and so happy that you are here um, in this segment, what we call In Real Life. Thank me later in real life where we take the opportunity to guide you, you black women through all of these interesting events, this road, this windy road of life, you know, we wish we just had this um, guide, you know, something that says when this is going on, honey, do this, don't do that. When this is going on, like we need that, we need that library, that reference. So when these life events come up, you're like, oh, girl, I got that. I ain't been here before, but I know someone else has. They can get me through it. So I'm so excited today that our special guest, as we talk about child support, honey, who does not want to talk about child support, mm -hmm. talk, talking about an interesting um, windy road topic is child support for sure. But I'm super excited to have Tanya Mitchell Graham here today. And um, Tanya Mitchell Graham, who's been practicing for 29 years, who is the founder and owner of the Law Offices of Tanya Mitchell Graham, PC, in the Metro Atlanta area. Um, I can brag on her a little bit because she's just not some random acquaintance. I've had the pleasure of working with Tanya. I'd say we're probably close to 19 years now, maybe 20. Uh, 2004 or three, one of them. 2003 or four. It's been a long time. We've had a few clients in common over the years. Both of us, um, you know, I practice primarily in the entertainment industry, although Tanya practices, you call that family law, right? Correct? That's it's right. Family so. law primarily for people in the uh, various uh, entertainment industries, professional athletes and entertainers. So it has been nothing short of a made for TV miniseries as I have <laughs> had the opportunity to work alongside Tanya and um, all jokes aside, you know, as we were talking before we were getting ready to get started, I said to her, um, you know, thank God my children are grown. Um, but if I had a child support issue, Tanya would absolutely be the very first person that I call. I would not hesitate. Honey, you'd probably be mad because I might be calling you in the middle of the night under stress and duress. That, that's... But, usual that's because okay, that's, that's not usual <laughs> but i am just so grateful that um you have been um a part of my professional life and so much that i've learned and that i've garnered from you and i've been able to share even with people in my personal life as well so i'm so appreciative of that and i have to tell you girl you're one of the baddest chicks in the game so thank you, um, thank you for being here with us as we absolutely navigate Anything women through some happy. real life this child support here yes ma'am let's talk about it let's talk about it so yes. um we're going to come from a few different angles today but where i'd okay. like to start tanya is let's assume you know we're talking to um black women been in a relationship and then you'll be able to clarify whether being married or not matters and now we realize hey got a baby it ain't working we're gonna need some child support so we're starting at the beginning literally at the beginning so mm -hmm. let's let's i want to kind of put you i want to kind of paint the picture in the landscape for you where i'd like to begin so okay. what is literally step number one a woman knows that she wants, needs, is entitled to child support, has never done anything related to this. Where does she literally begin? Well, we got to talk about it, whether they're married or not, because... Okay. So let's assume first that she is not married, and then we're going to get to the married. Not married. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So she's not married, and mm -hmm. um, we're in Georgia. So in Georgia... Uh, dad has the obligation to pay child support, but he has absolutely no rights to the child until he files a petition to legitimate. Now, where do you go? A lot of women run to the Department of Child Support Services. I say no. Uh, I do, and I'll tell you why. And then there's another segment. There is an administrative branch where people can run and get an administrative uh, child support order. I say expletive, no. 
And here's the reason for both of those. <laughs> so the first one, the Department of Child Support Services, they can establish your child support order and they can collect it for you. Now, I like them as a collection agency. I don't like them uh, to establish the child support order. And I will say the same thing for the administrative uh, child support orders. They basically take the word of the father what their income is. They do basically no discovery, all right? So if, you're, if the father is working a W-2 job, then it may be okay. How do you do that, that. right? Okay. It, it may be okay mm -hmm. um, because they will get their information from the Georgia Department of Labor. They'll know exactly how much income they've earned year to date, and they will be able to see what the W-2s have been. Typically, when they start a child support case for a mother, they'll send a letter to the dad and they'll ask the dad to provide the last three years of the tax returns, W-2s, year-to-date paycheck stub. And so if you have a father who simply works a job and does not have, like, you know, a lot of people have a side business. They'll have a job and then they'll have a, a business or a lot of people are self-employed. So if dad simply is a W-2 type of person, those two avenues may work for a mother because it doesn't cost mom anything. There's no fee for mom. Um, they can establish a child support order based on dad's W-2 wages. Uh, they'll be able to look at Georgia Department of Labor and see their current uh, income. And I'm speaking in terms of Georgia. I can talk about some other states generally, uh, right. but we, we're here in Georgia. Um, so they can, they can look at it from there and they can establish a child support order. Now, keep in mind in Georgia, child support is based on both parents' income. Uh, so mom will have to provide what her income is. Uh, dad will have to provide the, the proof that he needs. They can put that information in a child support worksheet. Uh, they can look at how much does it cost for the child's medical insurance. They may require dad to provide the medical insurance if he's got a W-2 type of job where he gets uh, you know, medical benefits himself. Uh, depending on the age of the child, uh, we have to talk about and take into consideration uh, how much is it going to be for childcare. A lot of times that figure is placed into the worksheet and they can come up with a fairly decent number when you have a gentleman that is strictly a W-2 employee. Right. So Tanya, is it fair to say, and again, I know that you and I were in Georgia, but is it fair to say, regardless of state, that the process is pretty similar overall? Well, I think so with respect to, they have something called, something similar to the Department of Child Support Services, basically in every state. Right. And then they have an interstate uh, type of your IFSA is what we call it, which is the law that governs that. So that's if mom is in one state, Mm -hmm. um, and it may be easier. And this is when mom has limited resources because right. this is who really needs the most help. Right. When mom has limited resources, and let's say dad is in Florida, New York, or wherever, mm -hmm. then mom can go to the Department of Child Support Services here in Georgia. Uh, they will open up a file. They will contact the corresponding agency in the state where dad resides. And then they will establish a child support order based on the law in that particular state. Okay, no, that, that makes sense. So mm -hmm. what I hear you saying, because I want to repeat it, mom can go to whatever is the appropriate state agency where she lives that handles the child support. Father has W-2 income. Sounds almost like a slam dunk. N not much there to it. So you could probably get what you need or what you're entitled to based on that set of facts. So let that is correct. So let's kind of mix this up a little bit. So now let's, let's assume dad is self-employed. Yes. He got some other kind of stuff going on or he's getting paid under the table, whatever he has yes. going on. What should a woman be doing in that particular situation? All right. Now in that situation, this is when I think mom should, um, to the best of her ability, bypass the Department of Child Support Services, absolutely bypass an administrative child support order because they will take what dad's um, word is for what his income is. Now, how do you get a real income figure for a person that's self-employed right. that more than likely co-mingles 
his right. business income right. with his personal expenses or not, I, or not reporting all his income right of right. course they're not reporting. right almost i can't think of a single time <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying you know and i've got a lot of years now right. i can't think single time with a self-employed dad where he's reporting yeah i make a million dollars a year no if he says he makes a million he probably makes five million makes five, right <laughs> you know right. um so i can't think of a single time so if if dad is self-employed i really admonish mom to the best of her ability try to get a private attorney here is why when you have a private attorney that private attorney will file a petition to establish child support in addition to that the private attorney will file what's called discovery. And that's kind of like what it is. Let's discover how much this man really makes. Oh, and yeah. so in the discovery process, we would do some requests for production of documents. Uh, we would do some interrogatories. Uh, we have the ability to subpoena uh, bank records, um, credit card statements. Let me tell you how men hide money, ladies. Can I do that? Can I? <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> we want to know. Come on now. What's All right. I got to tell you. What's he doing over there? What's he doing? This is what they're doing. Number one, when they're self-employed, they are they 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 will pay themselves something like twenty-four thousand dollars a year. They may even have a W-2 that says that from their company, and that's what they want you to pay child support on. And I know the guys that I represent, they're going to kill me, but I got I to gotta give it up for the ladies right now. <laughs> um, you're going to need to see, um, number one, the business bank statements, all right? Because he's paying his mortgage, uh, uh, his car note, right. um, all sorts of personal expenses with that business debit card. Right. You're going to need to comb through that with a very fine tooth comb <laughs> to extract the personal expenses. But here's another thing that they do. Mm -hmm. They have the business credit card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything goes on the business credit card. The dates with the other women that cause yeah. you all to break up. The, the vacation uh, the, and all that. Yes, yes. Oh, I was yeah. going to say the trips. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They'll say their business trips, of course, of which course. is why they pay for them on their business Amex. Mm -hmm. There will be a ton of personal expenses on the business credit card. Right. So when you are in that discovery process, mm -hmm. you need to ask for business, not just personal, but business credit cards, business debit cards. You need to look at that. Here's another thing you got to do, ladies. You've got to ask for their cash app transactions. No, not the oh, cash yes, app. you do. You got to... <laughs> Okay, this is where it, go it goes down in Cash App. <laughs> it goes down in Venmo. Oh my it goes down in PayPal, Apple Pay. I mean, mm -hmm. this is where they're doing their Zelle, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And so you'll have a gentleman, like I've got a case right now mm -hmm. where the guy has, uh, you know, real property valued over, you know, over a million dollars, drives a six figure vehicle. And he says his income is $2,000 a month, <laughs> right? Oh, That's what he's saying. And, right, and, in, right, his, right. Yeah. and right. in his personal bank account, right. he doesn't even have that. Right. Like, right. how are you paying right. all of these things? Right. And so what a private attorney will do that the Department of Child Support Services and the Administrative uh, Services people do is they will hold this man to the fire. They'll dig deep into the discovery process. You know, once we get a few of these documents, right. uh, keep in mind that um, both parties are required to turn in what's called a domestic relations financial affidavit, mm. all right? And that's where parties show their income and monthly expenses. Now, I've, I've done a lot of cases in, um, in California. It's called a diesel master out there, okay? But almost every state has this, this document that has to be signed under penalty of perjury that shows what your monthly expenses are. And so guys do one of two things. They'll either put down what their monthly expenses are. So you'll have, they'll say their income is $2,000 a month, but they'll have $19,000 a month in expenses. <laughs> <laughs> or because they're paying it all through their business account, they'll have like, you know, $1,200 in expenses. But the place that you live in, Cost five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars a month. You see what I'm saying? 
Mm -mm. That, 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 that math that math ain't adding up that's all i'm saying it's exactly right right um so a private attorney will do the discovery will dig in there very deeply and get the financial information that you need so that when you go to court a lot of times once we dig deep enough these guys don't even want to go to court okay the case will settle um but you've got to be able to demonstrate that this guy has the ability to earn and that he is hiding income because of his lifestyle, okay? And, and so Tanya, when I hear you say that, I mean, it completely makes sense to me, but I'm also thinking about that woman who thinks she cannot afford you. She knows mm -hmm. he's getting paid under the table. You know, mm -hmm. she knows he's wearing designer shoes and taking vacations right, and right. living large, but he's saying he has no income or very little income. What is that woman supposed to do? Because you and I both know if she goes to child support, whatever it is, they're going to do that equation and she's going to get some crazy $100 a month, $200 a month in child 300. support, <laughs> whatever that is, because they're believing what the father says. So mm -hmm. for that woman who thinks, how in the world do I afford a private attorney? What would you say to her? Well, I would say that um, there are so many qualified family law attorneys. You don't have to get the attorney that's been practicing 30 years charging four and five hundred dollars an hour. Uh, you can get a younger attorney, but here's what I like about well-informed clients. I like clients to participate in the litigation with me because one thing about it about it is they will know the facts better than I ever will. Um, so it's important for women to know these are the ways that we find out about the money. Number one, a request for production of documents needs to be sent to that. Like they can get an attorney with a little less experience, but educate themselves on what that attorney needs to be doing for them. The most important part of the lawsuit is the discovery process. And that's what I'm talking about now. So they should know, okay, we need to do a request for production of documents. Um, like I said before, in addition to asking for the regular things, we know to ask for paycheck stubs, right. bank statements, right. um, W-2s, 1099s. Mm -hmm. But then you have to go a little beyond that, ask for business bank statements, ask for credit card statements, mm -hmm. even for uh, individuals who you may not know that they have a side job, right? And so you really have to, when you get these documents in particular, you really have to go through it line by line and, and see if it makes sense. You know, you can't say that you have two or $3,000 a month and that's all of your income, but you customarily pay off your American Express upon which you charge 10 to $20,000 a month right. or whatever it is. And it, when I hear you say that, I just think about knowing to stand in his shoes. You know how he's moving. You know how he lives his life. So if you know he pays for everything cash app, request the cash app. If you know he uses his business debit card for everything, pull that. If you know that he's changing businesses and tax ID numbers all the time, try to recollect as many of the companies that you can think, you know what I mean? Like you have to stand. You are here. giving, you're giving knowledge right now because a lot of times these women, because they've been with the man, they know how they move. They know how they pay for things. And so ladies, if, if the relationship's starting to get a little shaky, but not over yet, pay attention. Do you see a Wells Fargo um, statement or a debit card being used? I tell you, you know, sometimes the sky, you see that the Chase Bank or, you know, pay attention. If he pays for everything cash app, if he buys the shoes at a certain place and pays for it with a credit card, you know, we can do discovery to third parties. It's not just limited to the dad, uh, his bank, his employer. We can do third party discovery to a car dealership. So I have one case where mm. the gentleman um, bought the car right. for my client uh, in cash. 
Right. But of course, he's not saying that in the litigation. Of course. And unless and until I subpoenaed the documents directly from the dealer, I would not have known that information. So now that I see that you bought a car cash, now I can begin to inquire about the source of that income because I have three years of statements and none of them show this money yet. You bought this car within the past three years. You see, and so now we can put a few cracks in the story. Um, I just I just had a case that we did and the gentleman was self-employed mm -hmm. and he was trying to tell the judge how adversely affected he has been by, by COVID. By COVID, right, right, right. Yeah, um, right. however, he didn't miss a beat with any of his expenses. Mm -hmm. His level of spending mm -hmm. was the same from the time that he got his divorce in 2018 all the way until the end of 2020. Right. So, you know, you can't say that your income has changed. I had another case where a gentleman said, well, my income dropped so much, but he bought five pieces of property during the pandemic. You see, so you've got to dig deep. Sometimes we have to do a title search. Sometimes people are buying things in other people's names. Sometimes there'll be a slip up. Here's one thing that you gotta do. When you get the bank statements, and you see transfers to an account, you need to find out what account that is. That may not, not always be, oh, that's just my, my other child's mother. No, that's another account that he didn't produce for you. That's where all the money is. So you've got to almost go line by line, especially looking at these bank statements to look at the transfers in the last four digits of the account because sometimes that's statements that he has not produced. And I've, I've caught that several times. It sounds like we have to do what we're typically very good at anyway. Is, right. Yeah, you know, we know things by nature, we can't even help it, you know? And we're observant by nature too. So it sounds like we really need to have a strategy and really right. sit down, separate ourselves from that emotion, get mm -hmm. our business hat on, and Absolutely. really just start putting together all of the pieces because we need to be able to hand to somebody like you and make mm -hmm. your job easier, which saves us money in the long run to I say, hey, to that. Yes. level of preparation, we can get through this process faster because this is what I know for sure about him. Let me pull this together. Right. You, now, you made a very important point. Not only pull it together prior to the lawsuit being filed, but once it's filed and the documents come in, women can save themselves a ton of money if they go through that line by line analysis themselves if they're able to um, and then point out things that look strange to the attorney i always ask uh, my clients to please these are the documents that we received you know this person better than we do could you please review this thoroughly and let us know what thing is strange or even what thing is customary so that that can help us really find the money. There's always a trail, especially nowadays, because ev no one hardly ever pays for cash, although you got to watch a lot of uh, cash withdrawals as right. well. Um, right. That's important. But a lot of people are paying for everything uh, with Cash App, Venmo, Apple Pay, and you've got to request these transactions. Mm -hmm. And so if you're hiring a, a, a fairly young attorney, um, ask them to ask for these things in discovery. Right. So right. In, in, in addition to the request for production of documents, we can send what's called interrogatories, which are questions that have to be answered under oath. And so I love for my clients to assist with that process. I have, sure, sure, I have a set of standard questions, but the questions need to be fact specific to your case. And women come up with some really great things like, how did you pay for um, X, Y, and Z that you bought on thus and so date when you were with the petitioner? Yes. Right. <laughs> so right, he right, knows, right. don't lie. <laughs> I, I saw you on Instagram while you were in the Bahamas. You know, you posted that. How did you pay for that trip? You mm -hmm. know, or whatever those oh. things are. Yeah. Because I'm they I'm have sure to stock social media is everything for sure. Not only do they have to stock the social media, but they have to screenshot it. Because <laughs> once he realizes that you're Hold watching on. Hold on right there. We, we just need, ladies, we just got very specific instruction to screenshot, not just note, 
Let's screenshot because this is what I tell people all of the time. Your level of organization and documentation has got to be amazing. You are building the case. You are building the case. So you want, you want it just to be a layup. You, you, you get in front of the judge. You just want the judge to be like, really? Why are we even here? Like, what, what, what are we doing? So please, whether it's the text messages, whether it's the social media, you have got to make sure your documentation is amazing. But screenshotting social media, that's great advice, really good. Well, well not only screenshot social media, but before you file, mm -hmm. make sure you got a, either, either, a, <laughs> either a fake page following this gentleman <laughs> or some friends, because as soon as the thing is filed, he's, he's not only going to delete you, he's going to block you. <laughs> so when you have that first hearing and you start pulling out, uh, you know, exhibits uh, one through 12, right. the various, uh, the flex and the drip on social media, right. uh, <laughs> you will be blocked <laughs> and all your friends too. So make the fake page and follow the guy and get the information because a lot of times guys that have a lot of money, they cannot help themselves. They want to let everybody know about it, how wonderful they are, how great they are, how successful they are, what a boss they are, and they post it. And so that's the type of information. It's very important. A lot of guys will get in here in court and say, oh, well, that's fake, or I was doing, no, no, no. This is how you get a lot of information for court, looking at their social media. Please don't discount it and think that it's, it's not important, because it is. It's very important. Screenshot and even um, you know record. How do you do that with the iPhone, where you do the video record? Right. And they've got the videos posted, all of that. Well, all of that helps because again, yes. you're building the case. You know, this this is stalking with, with purpose and intent here. This is yes, it's a business transaction. It's just a business <laughs> transaction. <laughs> That's funny. So, because while we're talking about this, and I'm glad we went this way. So, what we sounds like what we're talking about is that level of preparation and that focus. So, can you also help? Um, can you also help our viewers manage their expectations as far as how long this could take? Because obviously, you know, a lot of times you're frustrated. You could be struggling. Your kids have expenses. You're trying to provide. So, but normally from start to finish on average, I know some cases are much more difficult than others. This can take about how long? Um, well, let's see. If it's a contested proceeding, which most of these are. Contested um, means. Contested, means contested meaning that you file the petition and dad doesn't just agree to a number and you guys sign an agreement and get it done. Okay. So that's called uncontested. And I have those cases sometimes, um, but most of them are not. And so if it's a contested proceeding, you can very easily spend six to eight months in there. Keep in mind, once he files his answer, right, you have six months to do discovery. And so typically after or somewhere near the end of the discovery process, then most courts are going to require you to participate in mediation before you can even get a final hearing date. So six to eight months is actually short. Mm. And so um, depending on the level of uh, preparation prior to the filing of the action may determine how long we're going, because if, um, the ladies are able to gather the information and we're able to prove what we need to prove, then a lot of times these guys don't want to go to court and lose because they'll be obligated many times to pay some or all of mom's attorney's fees. Okay. And so that may be after the fact. So a lot of ladies are like, well, dog, how do I get in and pay the retainer to even get things started? I know that's an issue. And so, Again, what you have to do is find an attorney um, that you can, there are so many good attorneys and right. there's there are a lot of good young attorneys too. Right. And their retainer may not be as much. Right. And you can actually help your attorney with the case with some of the information that I'm telling you. If you see yeah. that your attorney has not sent out a uh, discovery, they haven't sent out a request for a production of documents, um, they have not sent out any interrogatories, you can ask them about it and say, here's some information that I have when you come in and then continue to monitor during the case. One thing about 
uh, family law information is the facts are created not just before the case, but during the case. And so you don't stop monitoring once you file your lawsuit. You continue to do so to the best of your ability. Right. Uh, sometimes the guy will cut you off from access, but that's why you establish alternative means of having access prior to filing. Prior to the filing, okay, because you you can understand that that's definitely what he's going to do. So let, let me understand this. Let's just assume um, case gets filed eight months before the final decision is made. Will the child support go retroactive back to when we started the case, or is it going to begin at the time that the decision was made? Um, in Georgia, we do not have retroactive child support. Some other states do. Typically, what we're going to do when we are filing a, a child support case is we will either attempt to get a temporary agreement by consent or, um, which would be good for the father because that looks good for him at the end of the case. However, uh, some guys would prefer that the judge tell them what to do. And so we ask for a temporary hearing uh, a lot of times it's called a Rule NISI hearing, N-I-S-I. -I. Rule NISI hearing, you know, we use a lot of Latin. Um, so that's a temporary hearing to set up child support while the case is pending. A lot of times that will also ask for parenting time while the case is pending. And a lot of these guys will attempt to ask for uh, some kind of joint physical custody because they want to pay as little child support as possible um, not every, not every dad, you know, I have the pleasure of working for some great dads, but there are so many dads that instead of paying child support, they'd much rather attempt to have custody of the children or try to have some joint custody to mitigate the child support obligation. Right. So, so since you brought that up, um, I know plenty of women who, who are afraid of that, who know that because he doesn't want to pay that he's going to fight for full custody, joint custody, and now they're not sure what to do. Now they're, now they're afraid to go after all the money that they're entitled to. What would you advise a woman who, who has that concern? Uh, I would advise her to continue to be the outstanding mother that she is. Now, one of the things that I do when I have women that have that concern is I immediately send them um, the Georgia statute on child custody. Why do I do that? By the way, that's OCGA 19-9-3. Because a lot of people have the misconceived notion that mom somehow has to be unfit for dad to get custody. And as you know, Janai, that's not true. Um, so I want them to understand what factors a judge would consider in making a custody award because a lot of times when the ladies go seek child support dad will counterclaim for custody and so we look at the factors you know the bond between the mother and the child uh historically who's been raising the child um what are the safety factors in the home um continuity in the child's life here's a big one having help with your child. It is absolutely a good thing. Like mom, if your mother or your sister or your cousin can help you with, you know, pickups, drop-offs, even if it's at daycare, that is a good thing. Not a bad thing. It is beautiful to have family support and courts recognize that, that one person can't be at every place at the same time. Some of the things that mom has to make sure she's doing as well. Mom, you can't work three to 11, okay? Uh, in the middle of this custody case, okay? Because your child support case could very likely turn into a custody case. And so we've got to look at your work schedule. That's part of these factors that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We've got to look at the flexibility of your work schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, the bond between, uh, let's say you have this child, but you have another child from a previous relationship. The right. court will even look at the bond between the siblings. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot that I have to moms on because who um, come and surprise when their child support case ends up being a fight for custody. But I just tell them to continue to be a good parent, um, try to um, encourage a good relationship between the child 
and the other parent, but recognize who does what. You know, if you've been the primary caretaker, you've been the one, depending on the age of the child, if they're school age, you've been the one uh, going to the parent-teacher conferences, um, visiting the school, volunteering at the school, all of that history is another factor that the court considers and you continue to do so. So a lot of times these cases will start and all of a sudden this uh, very detached father who never had time for his kids, now he has gone to work, changed his work schedule. Uh, when we're in in-person school, now he can pick up, now he can drop off, now he wants to know what the doctor said. He didn't even know the name of the doctor before the case was started, right? So you've got to recognize this and there's got to be a balance between healthy co-parenting and recognizing that he's trying to take custody from you. So courts like flexibility, but you don't have to be flexible to right. a fault where you're giving him more time than you have. Right, right. So that's a lot to think about there. That's no, that's a, a lot to think about. But again, to me, it's all about strategy, you know. And all day. <laughs> that's what this literally comes down to. And, and you know what you're making me think about is, you know, war. You know, I tell people all the time, wars take time and they cost money. Mm -hmm. So I need women to settle in that this takes time, you know, this can take months to do and that there's a lot of work that you have to do. It can take over a year. Yeah. So, and you need to go ahead and accept that and you need to prepare for that. Um, mm -hmm. And you need to be doing the things that you need to do to be um, supporting your child support case. And also this potential impending custody case that he could flip this into whether it's genuine because he actually wants to co-parent or it, he's just using it as a strategy so he can pay less um, in right. child support. But again, like you said, continue, continue to parent and begin to build that case. This is very helpful.